Today I want to read from Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse number 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And then John 13, 35 says, By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Will you pray with me? Father God, I just thank you so much for another day. I thank you for everybody that is listening today. I pray that you touch them in a very special way. I pray that they uh, hear from you through the message that you have laid on my heart. God, I just pray for a special anointing today, for it's in the name of Jesus Christ in which we pray. Amen. You have characteristics that make you, you. Some people are specifically known for certain things that they do or uh, just who they are. When I was in school, uh, elementary school and junior high, I was probably the abnormally quiet, uh, weird kid. Uh, hopefully, when I got into high school, that was replaced by the really nice guy who was a cool drummer, but uh, maybe that's just wishful thinking. I remember some of the star athletes from high school, and I remember uh, who the super smart kids were. I remember uh, who the bullies were, and I even remember who some of the people that ended up getting into drugs were, unfortunately. Even as adults, people are known for who they are. There seem to be certain things that stand out, of pe stand out about people when, when we hear their name mentioned. From professional athletes to other celebrities to your co-workers to your neighbors to your fellow churchgoers, uh, people just stand out for different things. They're known for different things. Sometimes the notable characteristics are really great things, and sometimes the notable characteristics are really terrible things. Uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr. You know, those are just a few of the ones that stand out for good things that they did. But then there are people like Jeffrey Dahmer. There's Jerry Jones. Uh, <laughs> There's Jim Jones. I think Jerry Jones is the owner for the Cowboys, so maybe he brings up some bad thoughts for you too. Uh, the Charles Manson. You know, these, these people are known for some really bad stuff in their life. But it's not just famous people who are known for certain things. You are too. People notice what you do and how you talk. Are you the one who knows and shares all the gossip? Are you the one who always talks politics? Are you the one who is the first to help? Or maybe you're the one who tries to get out of help. Are you the quiet one? Are you the loud one? Are you the fun one? Are you the serious one? The strict one? The easy one? The judgmental one? or the kind one. Christians are supposed to be known for certain things, but unfortunately it seems like many times Christians are known for things that really they shouldn't be characterized by. We live in difficult times, and the tensions are extremely high. And Christians, just like anybody else, I'm afraid that they are developing hatred and bitterness in their hearts. We are told to live quiet and peaceful lives as much as depends on us. But Christians are causing divisions just about as much as anybody else, it seems. People are going to hate us as Christians, but we are told not to give them any reason to hate us, but instead let them hate us 
for doing good. Let them hate us just because we follow Jesus Christ. That's the only reason that people hated the apostles because they believed in Jesus and they followed him and they were telling other people and they didn't want the name of Jesus to be spread around. So I ask you, are you known more for your political affiliation than you are your relationship with Christ? That's a problem. Are you known more for your stance on COVID-19 or the vaccine for it than you are your relationship with Christ? That too is a problem. Do people even know that you're a Christian? If not, that's a big problem, and you need to ask yourself, why not? It starts with how we love. Do we love? Who do we love? Do we just love certain people? Do we love those who agree with us or those that we agree with? Do we just believe or do we just love fellow believers? Do we love our enemies? Because that's a big thing that sets us apart from the rest of the world because it's so easy to love people who love us. It's easy to love people that, that might do things for us or give us things or, or talk us up, talk nicely to us and encourage us and spoil us. But what about the people that, that we just can't seem to agree with? They believe differently, they look differently, they act differently, and, and we just plain don't like them. How are you at loving those people? That's what sets Christians apart in a big way. Do you love people from the other political side? What about those who do or don't wear a mask or those who are getting a vaccine or not getting a vaccine? People are going to believe what they pay attention to. Some people pay attention to CNN. And some people listen and pay attention to CBS or MSNBC or Fox News or Newsmax. And you know that they listen to these things and pay attention to these things because their beliefs show it. Some people pay attention to what celebrities say. And I want to tell you that social media is not always our friend. That's why we need to listen less to what these media sources are telling us and we need to listen and pay attention more to what our Bibles say. Otherwise, we're only hearing the side that they want us to hear, and we're not going to base our beliefs off of facts. We might think that we have all the facts, but I want to tell you that we are not getting all the facts. We are told that you will know Christians by their love. You will be able to discern false prophets from Christian prophets by their fruits. But it doesn't just go for prophets or pastors or teachers or evangelists or authors. It goes for all people. You will know them by their love and their fruits. What kind of fruits should Christians be displaying? Well, of course, the Spirit of God lives within us. So the fruits that we ought to produce, it's really fruit, plural, because a whole bunch of these fruits come from one tree. So it's one fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And what is love? You'll know them by their love. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Remember, we are supposed to love our enemies as well. So that definition of love in 1 Corinthians 13, that goes for our enemies also. There are things that are going to anger you if you pay attention to them. 
If loving your neighbors as yourself and loving your enemies means you need to quit watching the news and get off of social media, then do it. By all means, do it. There have been a number of times that I have had to do whatever I could to avoid certain topics with certain people because I didn't want to say things in the heat of the moment that later I would regret. I chose to stay out of pointless arguments. We must choose our words carefully and make them count. Before we open our mouths, before we type those words, before we hit the share button, we need to consciously ask ourselves what impact this could have on how people view us and the Christ that we are supposed to represent. Is it kingdom building or is it kingdom damaging? All that truly matters in this life is the kingdom of God. That is eternal, while everything else is so fragile and temporary. This world, this country, all that we build our lives on is fragile and temporary, and one day it's going to be uh, dissolved. The only thing that lasts is God's word, and, and our souls will go on one place or another. It's true that all it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. But what if, instead of fighting like the world fights, that we chose to witness to unbelievers and disciple new believers? What if we did what the Bible taught us to do and told other people, taught other people to do what the Bible teaches us to do? What if we spent more time praying for people and less time complaining about them or arguing with them? Do you want change in this nation? Let them, let the change start in you. We need a revival in the hearts of believers before we are going to see a great awakening in the hearts of of unbelievers. So, how do people know you? Let them know that you are a Christian by your love, because they will know your fruits. Fruits of the flesh or fruit of the Spirit? How will people know you?